friends now i'll start the session and uh, this particular company is very unique because we do not usually have a company with an mnc pedigree or a foreign pedigree on the sme platform so this is i think the only company i can think of rather which is there so over to the management of amton electronics limited please uh, welcome them with a round of applause please Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Snesha. I'm director of sales, and I think the most trending sector as of now, and that's the prime reason to have it post lunch, <laughs> so that after lunch everyone can seek their attention. So this is just a brief hour, like uh, outline on what we are going to cover it today next uh, uh, half an hour. probably uh, as mtron uh, it's termed as an esdm that is electronic system design and manufacturing or it can be reframed as an ems that is electronic manufacturing services so if i give you a layman lay uh, language example you might have all seen uh, uh, in childhood days green color board or blue colored cpu board in hardware and all that stuff so we are doing the assembly of that hardwares or we make such kind of products based on the customer requirements so our portfolio has been diversified into various segments to get a glimpse of it these are couple of segments that we are already serving just an example say automotive so automotive it can be like ev charger or ev charging station it can be battery management system it can be power drive or something kind of and apart from that if we say like uh, medtech or medical uh either you can say a uh, pcb is a ventilator or complete assembly of ventilator a kind of complete system integration where pcb remains our core competency and it can be a uh, like combination of say plastic sheet metal die casting cable assembly whatever it would be so in india we have two manufacturing setup uh, that one is in vadodara gujarat where we started in 2011 So 11 to 14, uh, probably 13, 14, we were in one company in their premises, and then 15, 14, we acquired one piece of land around 100,000 square feet at Vadodara, and uh, we are very here like four layer structure, and then uh, uh, like post that, uh, post COVID, we started one more manufacturing setup at Bangalore, uh, that has like one SMT line and Vadodara we have four SMT lines. So uh, SMT is a bit technical term that is called surface mount technology. so we have three as of now one is on its way so in total four at vadodara and one is at bangalore so globally uh, like if you see like uh, in terms of uh, uh, that d factor that is design so we have like 100 plus years of cumulative experience where we have served on the uh, like different embedded projects uh, it can be again if i just give an example if anyone comes with a concept say just an example they want uh, to design mobile or they want to design a laptop so from say hardware uh, like uh, in terms of uh, pcbs or whether it's plastics whether it's different kind of certifications like based on their end application it can be ip68 it can be ce it can be ul based on the geography as and their end application so all that can also be uh, ruled over one sub solution itself mukesh wasani he is the uh, ceo uh, he is the chairman founder uh, for the complete mtron group uh, he uh, has founded mtron group in 2008 and india we started in 2011 he is with uh, three plus decades of experience in this industry and uh, he has like uh, uh, done civil uh, engineering first and then post that uh, he got opportunity to go us where he did his electronics and started mtron group there and then he thought of to give back to society and with that in mind uh, doing something in india under make in india movement atmanirbhar bharat 11 we started in india uh, with the thought of uh, uh, doing something high tech niche market segment trending technologies in terms of electronics uh, to get some uh, within the india itself nirmal mukesh wasani he is the next gen pr promoter uh, he is also promoter holder uh, he is uh, looking after for upcoming uh, technology uh, he is a technology director and part of board member as well uh, he is uh, with uh, almost 12 years he also has been working uh, keenly uh, within the firm itself these are like a uh, road map on how we have been so have you incorporated in 2011 then uh, 14 it was inaugurated by uh, vajubhai wala who was uh, the minister at that phase of time and then uh, government uh, of uh, karnataka governor as well 
18, we had a, a like accomplishment of 20 CR turnover. And then uh, 20, we even received one uh, business excellence award. 21, uh, we started facility in Bangalore post COVID. And then it was inaugurated by Ashwat Narayan at that phase of time. He was the ITBT minister. And uh, simultaneously, we came across different certifications as well, which I think will go uh, across down the line. And then uh, we started two backend offices for designing as well. One was in Vadodara, one is in Ahmedabad, where we have like say, uh, hardware engineers, mechanical engineers, test engineers, and a couple of other. And then 24 uh, June, 6 June, we got listed on NSC Emerge platform. So this is a brief on to what I discussed uh, on how exactly and what exactly we do. So it's uh, again, I'm repeating, uh, it's uh, like uh, ESDM solution, that is electronic system design and manufacturing, where PCB assembly remains our core competency. And uh, if in case like uh, uh, various uh, sectors are being uh, catered, whether again uh, to give you a, a layman language example, it can be IoT, it can be AI, it can be drone, which we are already like a couple of uh, customers we are already serving to them. And these are the like certifications and processes that we already have, just an example, say 13485, that allows us to uh, make our product specific to medtech or medical industry. Four, 14001 is for specific to uh, environmental systems, so we do take care of that part as well. 9001 is for processes that we have, uh, the high-tech machines and uh, uh, the part of processes that we cater. 16949 allows us to cater into uh, automotive division. And then uh, unit in Vadodara is also certified under CSA, that is Canadian Standard Association. So we do have a couple of products where we ship it to, uh, like based on that criteria, we ship it to uh, North America market as well, the geography as, as well. So we are already, uh, we already have grants from that perspective. So this is like what we are equipped with, uh, like uh, four SMT lines we already have. Uh, we're adding one more that is on its way probably a uh, couple of months or month, maximum in a month's time it will be up and running. And uh, that is going to be again uh, uh, that uh, new line will be adding more our capability in terms of uh, type of chips that will be able to play as kind of AI industry 4.0 and all. Already we do have that, but that is going to be an addition because electronics as of now is changing day by day. It's getting a more miniaturized factor on day to day basis. So that will help us to allow one more step ahead. Then apart from SMT, there goes through hole as well. So these are different type of components, different type of processes. And then we do have box wheel set up uh, uh, as well. And I will not go with this advanced machinery includes because uh, these are like uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the SMT line itself. So what exactly your capabilities are? So product designing, so in case uh, anyone uh, is looking for, say, uh, if uh, has, has a vision of Industry 4.0 and they are looking out for something in terms of automation, say they want to develop EV charging station or they want to develop uh, uh, like a medtech watch or they want to develop, say, a battery management system for either automotive or something or telecommunication. So we do turnkey manufacturing only. In that case, like we do uh, designing for them uh, we do like prototype, we do pilot batch, we do mass manufacturing, and we only like procure the material uh, with our distributors, suppliers, manufacturers directly. And then we do the uh, complete uh, assembly of the products and then we ship it to them. And in such, um, in, uh, like uh, there are a couple of cases where uh, because our quality is uh, in that segment, that it is top notch, they even we ship it to their end customer directly. So that derives on how exactly we drive our quality and systems and processes. Then just an example like uh, 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 customer A, like uh, his end customer is customer C. So A places order to us and we ship it to C directly. So that kind of scenarios, we call that as a drop shipment. So we do such kind of things as well. And recently we started the cable assembly and harnesses as, uh, as well in-house, where like uh, wiring solutions, it can be for automotive, it can be for medical, uh, drone industry and several others. This is in depth of what exactly the manufacturing processes are and over and above like our regular PCB assembly, we do have some value added engineering services like conformal coating or ultrasonic building or box build setup for mechanical assemblies and all. So these are just a glimpse of uh, uh, in a more of a graphical view that it's completely one stop solution. So product portfolio, again, box build, that includes like uh, integrated enclosures, uh, PCBA, uh, uh, PCB assembly, it's been abbreviated as PCBA. 
that includes rapid prototyping as well as uh, uh, like uh, complex layout design where like customer gives us the schematic, we help them to develop Gerber files or once Gerber files are received based on the XY data, we help them to provide the stencils or manufacturing of uh, how exactly the prototyping of DFM has to be done and all that stuff. And uh, testing and inspection, we have a, a like a rigid process for that. And that is why we uh, have like, uh, uh, we stand out separately apart from other peer companies. This is a glimpse of uh, what kind of product catalogs we have. Uh, just an example again, automotive. Uh, then industry, again, uh, fuel dispensing or HVACs. Again, HVAC is one of the like niche market segment. It's not a wide consumer goods that we are doing. Then pressure switch for, say, swimming pools or something. Then gaming, as of now, probably I feel we are the only one who are serving to this sector. Again, gaming is not, uh, 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 like, it's again a niche market segment where, like, casino or slot machines, we make the PCBs of it, or probably complete pinball machines, a couple of setups of it. Digital cubes, again, uh, one of the niche products that we are doing it are uh, like uh, controller PCBAs where remote controls of PS5 or PS6. PS5, 6, I'm just giving a layman language example. Robotics, again, one of our majority catering uh, along with uh, IoT and drone. So uh, India's leading drone manufacturer, we are the one who provides them the complete controller PCBAs apart from their uh, like digitals and uh, other stuff. And then we do uh, warehousing robotics as well. So again, in terms of anything for uh, like uh, warehousing robotics or uh, mesh communication or wireless network devices. Medtech, uh, either say uh, like ventilators projects or either uh, uh, there was one device called air quality monitoring device. We developed it from scratch and that was being shipped to US market. Uh, and uh, uh, that, that has a potential to detect COVID at that phase of time. Power again, uh, SMPS or power relay, voltage regulators. So these are the different segments that we are already catering and trying to enter. Defense is the upcoming one where we already have started some prototypes and uh, we are going ahead with some certifications uh, uh, in that front where we already have registration done with BEL, HAL, vendor codes are received and down the line further processes are being uh, uh, catered further on how do we exactly uh, regulate that but couple of uh, uh, international players, we already have started for uh, one of the international player in the US for drone, one of the UK based company from defense, we have started some prototypes. So what exactly are our strength? First would be product portfolio expansion. So based on the certification types of processes and types of uh, segments that we cater, that is a diversified portfolio and diversified segments that we come across. So in case, if any of the segments there is a slowdown, we may not get impacted with that. And that diversification like mitigates our uh, industry concentration risk and uh, reduces our vulnerability to downturn in specific verticals. Uh, comprehensive, we have in-house capabilities. We depends more on in-house things than rather than outsourcing. No doubt for semiconductors, we still have to, but there can be, there can be a future plan of either vertical or uh, like horizontal or free forward backward or for, uh, forward integration. So that's a long term, we can just say to it. And then uh, we increase uh, uh, our like product variety just to ensure that uh, uh, with the different geographies in mind, even uh, we are the one who even ships to China as well through one of our end customer, we are uh, shipping to China where people are trying to import, we are exporting them. So that is something we take a proud of. Along with that, US uh, remains our main uh, uh, like sales. Uh, UK followed by Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Ireland, and Thailand as well, where we are now planning to expand uh, something in uh, uh, European countries down the line. And uh, quality assurance, we ensure that dedicated resources and rigorous testing protocols, whether it's functionality, reliability, whatever uh, requirements are based on the end application, because our quality is also IPC uh, certified. Recently, through Electronics uh, India Association, we got award in terms of quality second prize and in terms of uh, export business second prize. So it was a couple of weeks back only. Couple of like SWOT analysis that we have done, uh, like uh, uh, the strength would be industry 4.0 that we are aligned with because what equipments we have that are latest available in the market. And uh, that focuses uh, uh, along with uh, uh, some of the R&D capabilities that we are going to do it in house. Uh, to what we discussed on uh, design front, whether it's embedded, hardware, mechanical. And then uh, uh, 
most of the opportunities with updated technology, like uh, upcoming trending technologies that are the one and government incentives that are coming up along the, uh, this sector that is also going to be one of the major driver for this segment. This overall like uh, global market, uh, you guys are more champ than us. You know it better, how exactly the global overviews are. And uh, what are the industry insights? Again, uh, you know it well. Government initiatives, I think they have started PLI, they have started making India. Even 100% FDI is now allowed. So that is something uh, down the line uh, can be more effective uh, in terms of this complete segment. Uh, we already have stated uh, this. Uh, probably we are planning to grow at 40 to 50% CAGR for next three to five years. Uh, that would be with different uh, 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 like uh, things that keep uh, keeping that in mind. One would be industry focus. Down the line, we would be focusing on uh, industrial segment, medical and healthcare, power, gaming, automobiles, uh, AI, UAV, that is drone. And down the line, we would be more enhancing our operational efficiency as well. We have an in-house software called Mnet that uh, is kind of uh, uh, industry 4.0 kind of uh, software. It's a complete paperless documentation and everything is routed through the system itself. So from say RFQ to final shipment. So even on shop floor, no one knows who exactly the customer is, what kind of projects are going around and uh, I think that is something that we are working on. And uh, we already have like implica uh, implementation has already started on that front. And then uh, geographical expansion, apart from Asia and uh, US or North America, we are planning for European markets as well on how do we increase our expansion in that uh, particular regions. And then down the line, backward integration and expansion. Uh, we already started cable assemblies uh, in-house, apart from PCBA and uh, then uh, apart from that, uh, to what third party dependencies are there for a couple of plastic suppliers and all, we just see to it how do we do it in-house and all that. So to what target segments we have, they are based on the uh, like couple of reports, uh, just an example, drone is projected to grow at CAGR of 18%. So uh, entering to that segment itself can help us to grow. And uh, then uh, uh, in the industrial sector, there are a couple of PLI schemes coming up and uh, either telecom or something. And then medtech is going to be the, because the way it is getting revolutionized, complete uh, industry, uh, medical industry, so the next name that they have came up with is MedTech. So that is going to be one that we are going to eye on. These are the last year FI24's number, uh, I think. Uh, revenue breakdown on uh, how the geography wise, how exactly like service that we offer. So as of now, almost 70% is our PCBA. 24% uh, comes out to be our box build solutions and uh, five to six percent around is comes out to be with end to end that uh, design, that includes design and everything. And uh, geography wise, again, majority stays out of uh, US, then comes after uh, uh, Spain, UK, and other of uh, European countries. And then industry wise, industrial remains the top as of now, along with IoT and robotics. These are the income statements and all, balance sheet, okay. I think these are the awards and recognitions that we got. So, open for QA. Yes, the floor is open for Q&A, anybody? Yes, you can stand to the mic and ask the question. Can you? Hello. Hello. Sorry. Uh, thank you for the presentation, sir. Sir, you have uh, in your group companies, uh, the companies from the US, I think there are four uh, companies. Is there any plan to uh, merge them into uh, the Indian uh, listed uh, company? Uh, beyond CB guidelines, we cannot speak anything. So sorry for that. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, apart from that, sir, you mentioned you have four SMT lines. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the capacity of the one SMT line uh, for, for in, in the capacity terms? As of now, uh, if you see, we are running one shift, both the locations, Vadodara as well as Bangalore. And uh, one shift has been catered with around 80% capacity. So we, in terms of capacity, uh, we do have that, and we are not worried in terms of that. So I think from here, we can go easily 3x in terms of number. So capex down the line will not be a constraint. OK, perfect. Thank you, sir. That's all. Yes. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, 
so uh, i think if i am not wrong you have a subsidiary under this company not the separate us entity but under this company which is a uh, us subsidy so uh, uh, can you just uh, give a little bit of a milestone roadmap for the next 3 years for that us subsidy which is under this company sure i think a good question because lot of uh, uh, have this question so uh, initially if you see there were some questions on inter company uh, uh, business and all so that was the prime reason we open up one subsidiary uh, wholly, wholly uh, owned by mtron electronics india uh, that is registered at texas so that is uh, uh, the so in case any future business from us which was initially been routed through the flagship company mtron core will be now routed through the indian entity itself uh, mtron electronics us entity itself Uh, which is only uh, like uh, owned by india entity so that is the uh, long term plan and i think we already have stated even uh, before the business updates that we are going to have a, a growth of 40% 50% cagr next three years hi uh, good to talk to you again uh, so two questions one um, uh, do you have some ip here like uh, do you have certain technology patents etc uh, second is who are the major competitor right now uh, in this field I think uh, IP we don't have it uh, because uh, it's a service industry, and just in case if we own any IP, then sector will get completely closed. For example, if I make something in drone, then specific to that industry, no one will have faith or trust that we can go ahead with this company for that sector. So that as of now, but yes, service sector. If someone comes and asks us to develop something in terms of drone industry, yes, definitely we can help them out in that. So that is part one. Second question was related to. competitors uh, we are here to stretch our line uh, not the rub competitors line so no comments on that but uh, to what business segments we are on and uh, to what market strategy we have i think that is something we would be more focusing on uh, and uh, i think results are something that showcasing that as well so to what other peer companies are doing hi i can see your margins to be pretty high in the sector when it compares to other players that you have can you give me the break up on which which uh, segment do you have what is the margins for that and also your uh, majority of the margins according to me it is coming from a commoditized business then why it is so high than the peers mm -hmm. sure so uh, the type of customers that we encountered or type of segments that we encountered so just an example medtech so uh, medtech uh, they also like we are making watches for medtech where other people or other peers they are making watches for consumer electronics so here to what we focus is on quality or niche market segment kind of product with international customers with local presence so again uh, uh, like layman language example i am giving of the of the line siemens or snyder so just an example if something is there in terms of uh, say a ventilator that they make and when we make the pcb they are not going to negotiate for 500 rupees or 500 1000 rupees because your quality is something that they would be more focusing on over and above pricing so that is something that we eye on that is our market segment that is what our target segment is and in terms of bifurcation of uh, uh, bottom line uh, iot or industry 4.0 medtech they all are in this range of around 14 15% itself and uh, automotive something bit less but then we try to average out and we try to maintain this uh, ebit or we, we are going to maintain this pat that is for sure can you explain on the inventory part uh, our numbers on the inventory is pretty high it is going to be because if you see the turnaround time just an example again uh, there are 100 line items in bill of material so of which 10 uh, uh, parts are such that they are on 20 weeks or 15 weeks lead time so if i start from today i will get parts after 3 months of time or 4 months of time so i cannot take a risk on other 90 parts so your working capital is going to be crucial and that is where like we have our msp on how do we manage that so uh, generally for a mass production order it takes around 6 to 12 months to get turn around so that's the reason you may feel inventory on a uh, on a higher side can you give some clients name matlab uh, who are your uh, sorry. pretty large clients just last one or two questions yes um thank you um do you have a preferential pricing because there's a perception that you are us based and you get a higher pricing because of that and that's why your margins are higher so if you can reframe your question preferential pricing saying that let's say most of the indian players will have india pricing because mm -hmm. you have a us entity people think you are a us company uh so the there's generally a premium assigned to 
having products made in the us let that secret sauce be the secret sauce <laughs> but uh, uh, to give you the answer uh, it's not exactly but if you see the kind of target the segment and geography that we uh, like uh, encounter that is something more important so if you see uh, uh, like every type of customers are available everywhere even if it's in india that is availability availability of that kind of customers is also there it's not that it's not there so it's kind of customer that you encounter and kind of product so just an example again drone they are not going to like uh, uh, like uh, negotiate for 500 or 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees what they matter is quality because after going into the defense uh, that particular application if it goes to the defense and at that phase of time if that pcb fails that drone is going to fall down so here quality matters and that kind of machines that kind of setup that kind of processes that kind of quality that kind of benchmark we already have set so that is something that we eye on not on pricing so pricing goes secondary when it comes to all this and the 40 50 percent guidance that you've given on revenue how much of that would be organic growth in india 40 50 percent is organic and if you were to think about the balance the business transfer from the us entity to the india entity it huh? is including that understood would, so would it be fair to say that india would be closer to 20 30 percent organic and the rest would be business transfer down the line you can uh, expect something on that front Understood. And then when that business transfers to India, would it happen at a similar high margin? Because your peers yes, in India do not make that much money, by the way, at a margin level. That's why my question. Yes, yes, it would be. That is whatever like MSP is. Fair enough. Thank you. Last question. Thank you for taking the question. One is on your contracts with your customers. If you could share if these are multi-year contracts, is, I mean, what is the nature of the contract? and you know, in terms of pricing also, how what is the price and the duration in these contracts? So if you see our last uh, business uh, release, business plans that we have released uh, as per the uh, rules, uh, as on June, uh, that quarter ending, uh, we had an order of 130 CR. That takes around 9 to 12 months to close on an average. And uh, contracts generally are annual contracts that gets renewed every year. Because there are variable factors like, say, shipping cost, or material cost, so a lot of factors get variable into that. So that contracts get renewed every year, and uh, that has been taken care of. So, so and the retention rate of your customers, what would be that? I would say as of now, more than ninety percent. Okay. Customer day one, customer is still affiliated with us. Okay. One last question is on the restatement of your financials. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you explain uh, what does that mean? You know, you've restated your financials. Uh, so on a year-to-year -year basis, if you see a screener number, it would be 13, 10 to 13 percent uh, revenue profit growth, whereas your numbers show, you know, in upwards of 30 percent. So would you explain that, please? See, initially we uh, never had a thought of IPO and all that before six months, and then uh, like uh, the whosoever the auditor was, then we had a third-party audit and all that, and then after we came with a restated number. So that was the only thing. So and inventory and all that was adjusted based on the official statement that needs to be done as per, and that is already a part of DRHP and all. We already have framed that in part of DRHP. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I think a round of applause to the leading investor. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I hear that the PCB fab is a negative loss-making business in the country. And uh, is that insourced in your current facility? No. And do you have any plans to in the future? Uh, Bayer PCB is altogether a different industry. Okay. What we are is EMS, ESDM, or PCB assembly. Okay. So when we say in-house, that engineering services to what we get, just an example, to design that PCB. So we do that in-house. Okay. Once that manufacturing is done, after that what assembly needs to be done, that will do it in-house. So bare PCB, we don't do it. Uh, that's a separate manufacturing entity. And that's like we, as Amtron, we are not that into bare PCB manufacturing. Understood. And uh, regarding the IP question, so do you have any plans to uh, introduce any new uh, products which are not existing in the market? That you can always do uh, and partner with uh, and uh, ODM companies to market those products, right? So do you have any plans to do that? Uh, any R&D, uh, research and development on some of the other things are going on. Which fields? Probably it would be very initial phase to say uh, talk something on that front. But any specific fields? Is it medical or is it uh, consumer electronics? It would be very initial phase to say something on that. But down the line, long term can be there. And what's Not your R&D expense? Sorry? R&D expense? It would be uh, negligible to what we are doing. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think.
in this way and that you may please your honor with the same time. Uh, like I said, we have investors from all parts of the country. Anurag Podar from Assam. Anurag Podar ji, can you please come? Uh, we have some friends from Kolhapur also. Uh, Rohan bhai, uh, Kolhapur friends also please come.